I'm Matt. I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. This week, we're going to be forging Ragnar's Axe from the hit show Vikings. Now, on that show, we've seen a lot of different warriors wielding a very similar axe, but Ragnar, he's the main character. That's the one we see using it the most. He throws it, he uses it in battle. He almost always has it on him. And that's pretty appropriate. Vikings carried axes very similar to this, not only as weapons, they also use them as tools on a daily basis. We've wanted to make this for a long time. I'm a big fan of the show. So is my girlfriend. We've seen every episode. So I've asked her to make a Shield Maiden costume that she's working on right now. You'll see her later on when we do the demos. But Ilya is gonna get things started by forging the ax. He's got a lot of really cool steps to this one. Let's see what he's got for us. The first step in forging is to take that round stock and square it up. There are many historical ways that the Vikings and other cultures make axes like this. The one that Ilya's chosen is kind of the most modern. It's how really good forging hammers are made. And that's the punch and drift method. So once his material's nice and square, he can move on to using the punch, make that hole, and then proceed on with the axe forging from there. The first thing the smith has to do is mark on his material where that hole is going to be punched. He's using the corner of his tool, then he'll go back, get more heat, and begin the punching. You'll notice the punch he's using is quite tapered. It's also not welded solidly to the handle. It's let loose and captured on the top so that it takes a lot of the shock out of it as he punches. So he's going to punch about a quarter of the way through. You'll see him then turn the material on its side, give it a good strike, that allows that tool to loosen up. You can remove it, get more heat, and repeat the process until he's all the way through. For Ragnar's axe, we've chosen a nice sturdy piece of white oak right here. Kerry's gone ahead and pre-notched it here where I've drawn out my lines of where we're gonna cut along this piece of wood to make Ragnar's axe. So I have the shape for Ragnar's axe cut out. I was using a little bit thinner blade than normal. You can see that it put a little bit of kerf in the wood cut. Nothing to worry about though. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove all this extra material on the sander and get it into shape. Once the preform for the axe is done and the hole is punched, it's time to insert the bit. Now, one might notice that the preform has quite a bit of excess material because before I was using it to grab it and navigate. After I cut this off, I'll turn the axe on this way and put a slice right here. This cut in will open the body of the axe up and allow it to receive this bit. This is a piece of high carbon steel. In our case, it's a piece of Damascusite laying around. It is tapered, it's fantastic. After the bit is in, I'm going to cover it with flux and insert it back into the forge. That will bring it up to temperature so that the materials can fuse together and form a higher carbon edge. After inserting the bit and sprinkling borax over the surface to ensure a good weld, Ilya has returned to the forge to bring the whole thing up to forge welding temperature and moves to the anvil to set the weld by hand. 
He then goes to the power hammer to true everything up. You'll see Ilya from time to time while working on this axe using a top tool underneath the power hammer. This tool is slightly domed just like the face of a hand hammer, so each strike mimics that of a hand hammer. At this point, Ilya is now using a spring swage underneath the power hammer. This really allows him to pinpoint that material and draw out specific areas, in this case, the beard of the axe. Now the axe is pretty much to shape. It's time to go back to the hole that Ilya punched earlier and drift it to the proper shape. I assist Ilya by holding the axe over the hardy hole as he drives the drift through. We're gonna do this multiple times on each side, making sure the drift goes through the same amount on each side, creating a perfect hourglass shape on the inside of the hole. Taking a closer look at this axe, Ilya's now realized he's forged it a little large. No big deal, he's just going to mark off the excess that we'll remove during the grinding. Alright, Ilya's done a great job of forging the base of our axe. Now we were shooting for Ragnar's axe. This is almost the size of Rolo's, but no big deal. I'm going to be able to trim a lot off the back here, and then some off the front and around the entire perimeter and get our desired shape. Now that I've done as much work as I can on the 12-inch wheel, I'm going to set up and move to a 2-inch wheel. This will allow me to define the land jets and just trim up the excess around the inside of the beard. So we have Ragnar's axe handle pretty much to shape, and there's still some deep grooves left in the wood from the aggressive sandpaper. I'm going to take this scraper. I'm going to go along the handle of the axe very carefully. Just remove just the outside layer of wood. And as you can see, it's removing very fine curls of wood with a little effort. It's going to remove all the splinters and leave a nice smooth finish. We now have our axe profiled to shape. You can see I removed a lot of material from this, but we now are right where we need to be. The next step is to do that hollow grind that I talked about. It has a very distinct edge, very wide all the way down. So I'm gonna move to the wheel here, do an edge up along the wheel like this so I can see my edge thickness and make sure I don't go past my center line. Move on to heat treat. Rick's going to be using the flame to harden the wood on this handle. It's both going to give it a look that we like, and it's going to harden the surface. Then he'll take linseed oil and soak the entire piece. It's the same thing we do with our hammer handles to make them very strong.
with the perimeter of the axe now established and the edge ground in. The next step is to grind the face. In the show, this axe has a very aged look to the surface, so normally we may just leave it as forged. But since we used a power hammer, there's some pretty nasty grooves in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean the entire surface all the way through Scotch Bright, and then we'll go ahead and add that forged look again before heat treat. Since Matt had made the decision to sand the entire surface of this piece and polish it out, and we know that we want a rough hand forged look, we're going to go back to the forge, bring it up to temperature, and cycle it through the heat several times. One of the reasons for doing that is to create the scaled surface that we want. Ilya takes his time and heat soaks the axe head. He'll put it in both directions, bring the temperature up fairly even, and then he's going to be quenching directly into oil and give us a better cutting axe. After quenching the axe in oil, I set it on the anvil and wait for the temperature to drop to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, I take a wire brush and scrub off the scale so I can see the metal. That is important. The shiny metal indicates the temperature of the metal during tempering, as in reaction with oxygen, it forms a magnetic layer when the metal gets blue or yellow or green, so on and so forth. I cannot expose the edge of the axe directly to the flame because it will be already red by the time this is even beginning the tempering. So I stick the axe, socket first in the forge, avoiding exposure of the edge to the flame. What I'm looking for is a bronzish color along the edge. So it's going to be bronzish right here, bluish right here, and here is going to be in the gray area. The sound difference should be obvious when you skate a file. So this is the socket. It should be relatively soft and now the edge. It feels glassy and the file skates over it. So that is the perfect temper. Now in field conditions or without computerized kilns, this is probably how Viking axes were tempered. After heat treating and then tempering the axe, it's time to start putting the final finish on this blade. We're gonna move to a special wheel that we had made for us that has a bunch of different Scotch-Brite pads locked together on a spindle. This will allow us to remove the scale, but leaving the nice forged surface. All right, at this point, the surfaces on our ax are exactly where we want them to be. The next step is to get the color that we need. So I'm gonna dip the entire ax into a vat of ferric chloride. That's gonna turn the body of the ax kind of a dull gray, give it an aged look. But it's also gonna show some of the pattern welded edge that Ilya forged in earlier. So I'm just gonna leave it in there for about 45 minutes, but let's go ahead and get a quick sneak peek you can see the pattern welded steel on the edge there. So that's our nice high carbon cutting edge and the rest will turn a nice dull gray. Put it in there and let it sit. So now that we've completed the haft for Ragnar's ax, we're gonna attach the head to it. So what we're gonna do to get a nice fit, so I'm just gonna press it on by hand first. It looks good from here. Looks good down there too. I'm gonna to take a soft hammer so as not to mar the top of the ax head and slowly drive it down onto it. I'm gonna to try to get these points you see, these ears, as flush as possible to the wooden portion and coming out of the top. All right, so we got a pretty good fit. Now the last step 
is to take our wedge and drive it in. The reason we're driving a wedge in is it's gonna help expand the wood and prevent the ax head from coming loose. Now that we have our wood wedge in, we're gonna take a steel one and place it in the opposite direction, in a cross formation. Once we have the wedges in place, our last step is to wrap the haft with leather and it's ready. All right guys, so as I told you guys earlier, we've invited Natasha to come out to be our shield maiden in the demo. But what I haven't told her or you guys that I plan to ask her to marry me during that demo. It's a pretty special moment. I'm honored to share it with you guys. Now, as we all know, we've seen Ragnar and the Vikings pillage and plunder a bunch of different monasteries in the show. They steal the gold, they steal the treasure, they take it back. They often melt it down, reuse the gemstones. So what Lauren and I have done is we found a beautiful white gold setting for the ring and then an even more beautiful diamond. It's one of the most beautiful diamonds I've ever seen. Lauren's gonna go ahead and set that in the ring, and then when it comes to demo day, I hope she says yes. So I have the diamond here. It's a one carat stone. It's a beautiful VS2 G color, which is very high and bright and white. And we're gonna set it in the 18 karat white gold vintage setting. It has two square side stones, and then eight small side stones below that. It's all engraved. Now that the guys have our Ragnar's axe assembled, it's time for me to start doing the leather lace work up the handle, and then we'll do the grip later on. We've cut some narrow strips of dark brown leather, and I'm gonna get Rick to come on in here and give me a hand holding. Now I'm gonna use a little modern convenience here, a little hot melt glue to help tack this thing into place, make life a little easier. So I think this is about close to where we need to be for the first section. And I'm just going to tie this off for now. Once we get the other half laced through, we'll go ahead and wrap the grip and do a big knot at the bottom to keep the ax from being pulled out of your hand. Then we'll be all ready to go. I think this ax build turned out awesome. I love the extra work that Ilya put into forge welding the Damascus on the edge. Now, let's see if my shield maiden will accept my proposal and become my queen. Natasha, we all know you are now a worthy shield maiden. There's only one thing left to ask, and that is, are you kidding me? Will you be my queen? Please. <laughs> oh, I'm just <a> strong. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this is happening! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! We're engaged! <laughs> oh my gosh! Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.